Hey, how you doing? Hey, this is Admin from Plex Guide. So this is version eight of the install video. You know, just welcome um, to the site. And if you've already been here, great. Uh, if not, you know, hey, there's a lot of uh, things that uh, I can explain to you quickly in this video. The whole purpose of this video is so you have a good understanding how the install process works. So the first thing is obviously you come here to plexguide.com and you go to install Plex Guide. In order to install it, you do need to be a member, which is perfectly free and easy to sign up. And the reason for this is, is because we can provide you tech support, you can easy announcements, and uh, you can easily just chat with us. So um, yeah, just go ahead and sign up for the site here. And then if you ever need the wiki, uh, you can type wiki.plexguide.com or you can select the wiki here and it'll take you to a slew of information, which I'm getting mostly filled out because I've been transferring so many things back and forth. So if you ever have any questions, this is something you can look through. And if you ever got the time and sign up for a GitHub account and star, the project, it really does help you. You'd be surprised uh, how immensely that helps us out. So anyways, let's just go ahead and kick off with the install. So right here, you can see that um, I'm trying to log into a box. And this right now is a virtual machine that I have set up. So uh, the best thing to do is before you um, start just installing Plex Guide and purchasing a crazy service, run a virtual machine, virtual box, VMware. Uh, VMware's got a 30 day trial. Uh, you can also go to Hetzna if you ever heard of that, and they got a cloud VPS, and you um, basically you pay like uh, 249 euro per month, one euro penny per hour. And the reason I would suggest them is just because Plex Guide works perfectly fine, um, and you won't have no issues. It's also recommended that you're either root or a sudo user, so it just depends on how you feel about security. You know, root's not always the, the best choice, but the easiest choice is a local virtual machine, so no problems there. So we're gonna go ahead and install it. So right now the program is installing. Um, remember, when you go to install Plex Guide, it's going to go ahead and um, it's going to go ahead and start this process. So what it's doing right now is it's basically like setting up a kind of like a pre-install, uh, putting basic files into the right locations, doing your updates. So there's not a lot going on on this. Just keep in mind that you need to run this on Ubuntu 16 or 18. Uh, if you're using 18, do not use server as of now. Um, if you check the install Plex Guide. And one day you see that server a part uncrossed, you can. And the reason for it is because Docker is not compatible. If you don't know what that program is, don't worry about it. Just understand that it will give you the appearance it may work, and then you'll kind of blow us up on why things aren't working. So right now you can say you can see right here is that it checked that the Plex Guide was set up in place, and now it says to start anytime, which we are doing. So go ahead and hit return. So right now it's installing um, certain key Python modules. And it's also going to install Ansible for you. Um, Ansible is a program that uh, kind of like standardizes uh, certain things. It can do like mass installation, uh, certain command movements, things that are kind of difficult to achieve with Bash sometimes. So we can see that it's updating here now. Once, um, for some reason, if this program is like half installed, you get cut off or whatever, the installation is not messed up. Um, just be fully aware that uh, once you go back in and you start it up again, it's going to pick off of the area that it left off. So th that makes it great um, because originally the program didn't do that. You kind of had to, you know, do the whole command thing again. So we kind of set up some things to make sure that you're good to go. So it looks like we're still dealing with the Python phase here. Good times, right? So um, I do appreciate all the uh, appreciate you being a member or even taking time to watch this video. Um, this this program. Uh, was started in December 2016 timeframe and I had no idea how to use Linux and I was frustrated by all the people online who kind of just just go to any like uh, Linux form okay looks like it's doing an update here and start asking basic questions and nine out of ten people get kind of uh, antsy or stuck up and uh, I was like F it I'm just gonna just create something there's all these scattered guides all over the web and you know just consolidate it down and here we go. Okay, so right now it's asking us what do we want to update to. So right now, do not use beta um, if you're a new installer. Deprecated, I keep this here in case that you just want to go back to some legacy install. And here's, here's the current ones, and I normally keep like a few up. Um, and right now we started the dot one kind of thing, dot two, to help out. So right now I'm going to go ahead and install 7.2.2. But yeah, uh, this is this has been a great project, and I, I tell people I do this to 70% to, to, to help people learn, and then uh, the other 30% is to, uh, you know, help people out. Okay, so right now it's going to ask you what additional Plex Guide do you want to install. 
90% of you are probably going to install this one, the G Drive Edition, not the Solo or Multi HD. If you do these, these are like where you're not going to use Google Drive at all and you're limited to your disk. So solo HD means, well, the disk you're just running off of and Multi HD means you have multiple disks. Just be aware with the Multi HD Edition that you're going to need to format your own disk and make Linux recognize it and mount it and everything. It's going to help you mount all the other mounts, but only if they're available. Um, but you have to mount it, you have to format it, do all the work behind it, and trust me, that's not easy. It's kind of easy to do it in a GUI interface with Gparted in case you ever want to do some research. So we're going to go ahead and pick G Drive Edition. Make sure that uh, you sign up for Google Enterprise or Google Business, yeah, because without it, you're, it's not going to work for you. It's going to cause you problems and headaches. So just go ahead and click here, take you to the link, and sign up. And also there's a lot of explanations here. The good thing about the the account is you only need one user. It's gonna tell, it's gonna warn you of five. It's been like this for years. Google doesn't care. All you need to do is be one user and you're good to go. And there's a 14 day trial. Okay, so right now it's asking to service, establish a server ID. Somebody just call us text, CPU, whatever. Um, that is only important for backup purposes because what happens is when you back up your server, it's gonna back it up according to your ID. So make sure you keep it one word and simple. So right here is installing a bunch of common packages. So if this ever turns red on you, let us know. Um, it's been pretty good. So uh, if this fails, that's not good because that means you're gonna be missing things. But yeah, with the, uh, the G Suite for Enterprise with the Google, it's only $10 a month and you get unlimited space. We got users who got over 200 terabytes. And uh, it's great because you get your own username, your own domain. Uh, it's cool. You get your own email interface. So, uh, and you can also make alias accounts, pretty much like bogus accounts that forward to your real email. So there's a lot of benefits to this, even without uh, PlexGuy in general. Okay, so if you see that red, don't freak out. It says ignoring. So it only does that for new installs because it's checking for a file that's not there. Okay, so you can see right now this is creating all the folders for you. It's jmodding, it's it's shayoning, whatever you, you know, however you say it, it's doing it all for you. So now it's gonna install Docker for you. And Docker is the key piece where it runs all these containers. Um, because without this, well, we really can't do anything. Docker, I was very amazed by Docker when I first started this because the first thing you're gonna learn with Linux is you're gonna run into dependency hell. And if you uninstall something, there's a good chance you can break your box because a lot of dependencies go with it. Uh, also, if you sometimes reinstall programs, it's just problems. And then the, the, the crazy file structure, what Docker does basically, it, it kind of like creates these like virtual containers, kind of like think of like VMs. And if you don't understand that, just think of a program that runs on its own island and it thinks it's the only program there. That's what Docker is. It's kind of like the man in the middle. Um, so it's basically virtualizing an instance. And uh, if you're running Plex, Plex runs in a container, NetData, all these programs are gonna run in containers. And the great thing about it for you is, is that the data they generate store in a specific folder that I've set and if you blow away the containers and bring the containers back, guess what? Your program works right away. And the magic too is, is that if you do a backup of all your programs and it goes to your Google Drive and you restore it to another server and you redeploy the you know, containers of the same programs, the, 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 the programs that you run, it thinks, it's that, it thinks it was the last server. So if you ever do a backup and restore, you'll see what I'm talking about. But if you're new to all this, it's gonna be kind of over your head. All right, so now it's doing a Docker Assist. That's important because what happens is your programs will load up before your hard drive, I mean, before your disk load up. So what it does is once the program comes, once your computer comes online, it reboots all the containers. So by the time your mounts come up, like your hard drives and all that stuff, the containers can read the hard drives. So it was kind of one of the first things I ran into when I started this. Okay, now it's installing the Google Cloud SDK. And what this is, is it's basically to help you with the GCE feeder edition. So some of you who are older that are watching this video, I, I wouldn't know why, but if you're watching it, um, the Google GC is no longer optional on the front. Basically, um, long story short is if you're running a Google instance, Plex Guy will automatically detect it and it will install the feeder edition. It, there's, there's no other choice. So the Google feeder edition basically is, uh, everybody doesn't realize it, but you get $300 of free credits and you can look at our guides and it creates a virtual machine, one up, one up, one gig down connection with 300 gigs of NVMe drive space. And yeah, it just does magic for you. Here right here is Hetzner. So it helps you create instances with them. 
here's our clone that's installing. So this is kind of the key program that ties into talking to all the to all the drives that are out there. Wonderful program. Um, but yeah, back with Hetzner, yeah, like I can literally deploy a Hetzner instance from my current machine for testing purposes. Okay, now it's going to ask you which version of Watchtower do you want to install. Uh, you got auto update all, except Plex Nemby, and never update. So what happens is your containers, those virtual CPU instances I told you about, sometimes it might be a new version of Plex. So if a new version comes out, Watchtower automatically kills Plex and puts the new container up and you know, you're pretty much good to go. The bad thing is, is that if a, if a developer borks or sets up uh, bad coding instructions to a container, then, well, you're kind of stuck with that container. So I put a Plex, you know, ex, uh, update auto all except Plex and MB because there might, because these are two critical programs for people. You maybe don't want these auto update. You probably want to update them on your own. Um, and then I set up containers never update. So um, you can update, you can update them whenever you want at your, at your leisure. Um, and sometimes that might be good for people because um, you don't have issues. So for this demo purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do auto update all. So, yeah. And what this is saying right here is, uh, I don't know how to explain this. Um, what happens is when you when you're downloading a lot of content, it's all going to go to your like C drive or your current local drive, right? Well, you can see in this case right here, and this is a virtual machine, so and this is for testing, but there's only 40 gigs of space. But what happens if I had a two terabyte drive, right, and I had mounted ready to go? What this does is it allows you to change the location. And if you change the location, all the data and things that download and process will go to that second drive. So your first disk doesn't get overwhelmed. So and then and then also if a bunch of things are downloading and unpacking and moving around on the primary drive, well, guess what? Everything just slows down because you know Plex is running off of it. Everything's just running off your primary drive. So like right here, I pretty much say like Windows, you can have your items process on a D drive instead of a C drive. So that's basically what that is. If you don't know what to do here and don't know how to mess with it, just pick one, hit no, and leave it alone because you can always come back to this and edit it later. So that's never an issue. It's always going to be in the settings. Okay. So you could tell right there, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to exit on purpose and you can see right there, we get our little exit interface menu. So, you know, that's good. And you notice when I go back in, it pops right back up. So see right there, PGG drive edition version 7.2.2. There's my D and it is always going to show your disk space in the MVME version of uh, GCE. It will show a second disk in the future. I will update this. If you're not using the feeder edition, it will show you any additional disk that you're using. Here you can tell we added a little quotes, so you know it's not a dry and generic day for you. So let's see what it brings up. Yep, so some good, some little good humor. Okay, just a quick rundown. So that's the install portion of the video. So that's kind of what you need for the install, but I can just kind of give you a quick rundown. Um, the introduction video will have a more thorough rundown, but this is just a quick in and out, quick and dirty. So mounts and data. This is where you're gonna deploy uh, PG Move blitz or drives so move basically moves your data to your google drive at no more than 750 gigs per day pg blitz will exceed that cap and will move a bunch of stuff to your uh, team drives and you can see this process is a little complex and if you need a read-only server you got pg drives so basically it just installs a read-only so because you may have a second server and all you needed to do is for plex to read it okay so let me get out of this okay traffic what this is, is, this is a reverse proxy. Basically, long story short, you can, you know, access sonar.yourdomain.com. Just read the guides and follow this and you'll be surprised. Uh, you can get a free domain with DuckDNS or you can go with GoDaddy, something simple to use. And you just kind of have to put your information here, deploy it, you know, pop in the, the API keys. And next thing you know, all your containers are, um, your containers are uh, talking to your, um, your domain. Uh, see? Subdomain. Okay. Uh, PG box. So this is very new as of today. Uh, so before we had to have users install programs one by one, but now you can mass multi-install. It's awesome. So right here you can see apps queued for installation. None. Before you, you know, you'd have to type this and then it would just kind of, you had to kind of do it over and over again. So it, it, it kind of sucked if you were doing like a restore server or bringing up a new server online and doing a recovery. So now all I have to do is like, if I go net data, and then I hit enter and see how it queues there. And then I type sonar, it queues there. And then let's do one more. We're going to go ahead and do MB and there. 
And then you can see I can type exit to just get out of here or I can do deploy. So now it's gonna ask all three in a row. If there's multiple images for any of the programs, it will ask all of them first. Prior, you had to just kind of do them each per program. So you see here, NetData has two different images containers. If you want to just go with the default, always just pick one. See? So you can see that they have their own versions. So now it's going to go through the install process. It'll ask you about the cron jobs later on. I'm going to set that up where if you have two or more containers, it'll ask you in the beginning, do you want to do cron jobs? You can say no, and it just won't bother you with it. And then I'll do a yes, but pick a random time for me. And then, I've, or you can just manually pick each one of your own. So, um, yeah, you see how fast this just kind of goes through. And I did a little bit of common sense here. Uh, backups are not going to occur on programs like NetData because there is no data it generates. So um, we have like an exemption list that kind of helps you out. Um, also to take note, you can also create your own containers. So if you ever decide to create your own containers, you need to put an, an opt, OPT, slash my containers. And I have a template folder in there for you. So if you ever want to, you find a cool temp, something off the internet or something you just want to do on your own, we can deploy it for you. Okay, so there's the cron job I was telling you about. So nope. And then you see right here, the reason it says not set is because we don't have a domain set yet. Remember, like we was talking about traffic. So here goes MB. And in this one, we'll do a cron job and we'll be good to go. Um, also, there will be an update for this later that if you don't have Google Drive set up, it won't ask you to do a cron job because <laughs> it's going to, it's gonna to try to schedule it, but it, nothing won't happen. Okay, see right here? So we're gonna say no. Uh, well, we'll do yes for this example. So here you can do a daily or you can do a weekly cron job. So let's just do a weekly. So I'll do one and then I pick a time, you know, 1200 hours. And then that's pretty much it. So what happens is, you know, on that day, at that time, it will basically back up all your data to your Google Drive. Okay. So let's say you want to uninstall a program, right? So you see here, we got our programs going. So 192, 225, good stuff, right? So we got net data, right? So if we want to go to net data, I could just type uh, the IP address, 168.1.225, how you see here, and then I just go 1999, and there's net data. See, isn't that cool how fast that, that comes up? So here, we're going to uninstall it, just to show you proof of concept. Oh, and you can try to uninstall Portainer all you want. Every time you install this, every time you set up this program, if it's not there, it reinstalls itself. <laughs> so, so if you haven't played with Portainer, it's basically like your GUI interface for Docker. So at the very end of the video, I'll just show you that. And let's click enter again. And there you go. Voila. Done, right? Pretty easy, ain't it? So let's go here. And bring this back up. Okay, instances in GCE. So here's that Google Cloud instance I told you about. And so this will undergo a rewrite. So this is still on the older one. You can tell by the tax. But basically, you could set up your information here and basically deploy another server. And then you can securely you know, SSH into it with, with keys and, or destroy it. So you basically build out another server from here and run Plex Guide again. Uh, and the same thing with the Hetzner you saw earlier. Here's some tools. So backup and restore, common sense. Server port guard. Port guard basically, uh, how can I say, you, you notice when I brought up NetData, there was no password. Well, net, there's a few programs that, that are not protected by, or have no built-in protection. So port guard will ask for a username and password if you decide to deploy it. Application guard is basically, uh, oops, uh, sorry, I'm talking so fast, I'm getting them backwards. Application guard is what does that. Port guard is what closes down your ports. So, um, Port guard, it, port guard and application guard don't matter if it's just running on your home server. Um, but these are important if you're running these across the internet. So um, if you decide to set up a net data, well, net data needs to be protected by application guard for the username and password. Server port guard will close out the ports. So if you, you know, you turn this on, but you don't turn this on, well, uh, you're, you're only half protected because all a uh, malicious user has to do is just type 19 colon 1999 and they can get into your stuff. Okay, PG Patrol and PG Track. Um, like I said, if you check out the wiki, uh, you could see that it's written by another party. Uh, but I kind of rewrote it, not 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 the program itself, but I accommodated to Plex Guy and did a, another coding script and some YML adjustments. So basically, you, you can just go in here and just kind of fill out some basic stuff. And look, you see, I put in some checkers, so Plex not running. PG Patrol basically, 
if your users like pause for so many minutes and kick them off. So basically it kind of keeps your server kind of freed up from stupid users who just decide to abuse your server. PG track will blow up your server with all kinds of uh, content. Uh, because if you're using sonar or radar, it's kind of painful to enter all that stuff in. So this will go to, this will reach out and I think it might deny you. Oh, so we've got a generated token. Yeah. So we're not gonna do all that right now, but we're going to exit out of here. Here you install your own personal VPN. So guess what? If you're, if you have this deployed uh, out, basically you can run your own VPN. So if you have a Hetzner in Germany and you decide to connect your computer to it with this, then you, then you're remote server turns into a VPN master for you. It's your server, but make sure you have it locked down really well if you're going to do this. Network Auditor, um, basically it's just a bunch of tools here to do speed tests and benchmarks for you. And that's still in the old format. And a pre-installer. So you might have problems with the pre-installer. So you might say uninstall Plex Guide, you know, to just do X, Y, and Z. So, and that is pretty much it. So uh, other than that, I appreciate your time for watching this video. If you see that little orange globe, please subscribe and like. Uh, trust me, I, I, after seeing how these YouTube videos work, you really do gotta, uh, you know, get some kind of comments or or uh, likes. But um, <clears throat> anything you do will help us grow. If you choose to donate, that does help and go a long way. It helps purchase uh, equipment and test servers. But other than that, you have a great day.